You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keen Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we will always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerd Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash For All Nerds. Welcome to For All Nerds. And welcome, Internet, to another episode of For All Nerds, the podcast where we talk about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color, doing things a little bit differently this week because it is I in the captain's chair, Tatiana Kang, the Conqueror, also known as Kuji Kajalia down to the socks, a.k.a. Lord of Lightsabers, a.k.a. Scroll Obsidian, a.k.a. Coldest Winter Soldier Ever, Doc, Aki, Tesseract Thompson, and the Ting of the North. And this time I'm joined with the first, what did you call the first chair? Number one? The number one of the, we talk about Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just know it's Make It So. I don't know what he's called Make beyond it, that, that. That's John Luke, but you know, his homie that breaks bones and takes no, you know. That's who he no tells prisoners. to make it so. He always yeah. tells him make it so. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, but yeah. I have the, the, the lovely. No, I didn't know I was lovely. <laughs> it's your boy DJ Ben. I mean, aka I still don't have my Marvel AKAs in the right place. So Lionel Richie, Bid Fetch, the Legend of Slapper Vance, De La Troll, Ready Hater One. Uh, that's about it. Charlie Brown is toss a coin to your ninja here in the spaceship. Yeah, I am back in the spaceship. <laughs> it's different yeah. when you you go second, right? <laughs> it does. It, yeah, it feels weird. Yeah. Uh, well, we are back because we got to talk about X Men '97. We are talking about this crazy, this insane episode, probably potentially the most important episode of this, I think it's 10 episode series, but the most important episode, at least thus far, um, episode five, remember it. And I mean, I'm in shambles to be quite honest with you. I, I watched it twice back to back to make sure what I saw, what I think I saw was what I saw. And yeah, i I'm down bad. What about you? Uh, pretty much the same. I wasn't here last week to talk about uh, episode four. So it was interesting to me. Uh, one, I, you know, listening back to y'all review of it. And then two, one thing that like, it felt like uh, Bo DeMaio, I think I'm pronouncing the mm -hmm. person's name right. The former showrunner sure. of X-Men 97. It felt like this week they went ham on X Twitter in a way that I hadn't seen them do before. So it was like, oh, okay, they're out there and really talking about this episode. And one thing that they made a point about was how this was the big turning point episode of the season. And I thought that was really interesting, coupled with the fact that last week we had this episode where it's basically about Jubilee learning that you can't go back again and you shouldn't want to go back again to the same thing over and over again and this whole nostalgia thing, which a lot of people were here for X-Men was because of the nostalgia in it. And they're like, straight up, the writer's room, everyone involved is like, well, that's not what we're here for. Yeah. And this is what we're here for. We're here for turning it up. And Bo even talked about that, how the first four episodes were a lot of the nostalgia stuff, kind of lulling you into the false sense. Even the Edsmen are like, okay, we're doing all right. You know, humans are fucking with us. You know, we're moving on. Da -da 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 -da. Genosha's coming up. They're about to be admitted into the United Nations. Everything's great. And then episode five. Yeah. And Bo, since he since that was announced that he was essentially dropped again, still don't know the official reason. And I don't know if he ever maybe one day, Ooh. but I don't know if he ever will speak on it. But he spoke up and like really even his, his Twitter and all his socials have been quiet for at least a month, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more, especially the Twitter. The last thing he did was in March. So when he posted this, he actually posted uh, like a two two images that had you know that he had some written things where he expressed as you mentioned, the importance of episode five and the fact that this was his centerpiece to his pitch to Marvel mm -hmm. back in November 2020. So this is still like deep in the throes of pandemic. And he expressed how like this is and he didn't he was in essence making that comparison. This is like the 9-11 
mm-hmm. for the X Men, and and yes. he mentioned, and the reason why I'm saying that is because within his text that he provided, he mentioned how he grew up like he was. I think he said he was coming into high school or college or something like that, mm-hmm. right around nine eleven, and like how he was kind of in that bubble with like, and it's just, and when I say the bubble, I mean the life is what it is, the 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 bubble of normalcy where. Things are the way they are, you know. Whether whether you're happy or not, it's kind of besides the point. Is this is life? This is how it is. It's, the sun, you know, the sky is blue, the grass is green, whatever. And then something beyond your capacity happens that shocks and shakes and really just fucks up your entire worldview. And that's and he mentioned that that occurred to the country as a whole. That occurred to the world as a whole. And that this that that feeling of just being torn away from that feeling of normalcy and that feeling of everything being quote okay got ripped away and this is what happened in this episode five of x-men and just the the level of like suffering and trauma that happened during events like 9-11 he also mentioned things like tulsa he mentioned things like covid you know obviously the pandemic itself he even mentioned which was personal to him pulse nightclub now if y'all remember the whole post nightclub massacre that happened a few years back where it's, it's, it was, it's was a safe haven for queer queerness, LGBTQ. Like it was, and it was his safe because he said he actually used to go there. And for that safe space, a place that you think that, you know, that was his, he liked it. That was his Genosha in a sense, a place where you can be and you can belong. Cause this is, and these are, you know, and, and that was a little bit later, but like, before that time, like he wasn't even, he hadn't even come out. It, it didn't, it took after 9 11, that's when he came out. So to think that, you know, after all the strife and tribulations you go through, you find this place where you're like, this is my family, this is where I belong, this is where I can have fun and be myself. And then that's ripped from you. And we, they, when I say the parallels and the mirrors, to all of these different tragedies in this particular episode was absolutely insane. And I purposely did not read what he wrote until after I watched this episode. Cause Mm. I didn't want to, you know, cause he mentioned spoilers. I didn't want to mess nothing up, but like what he provided hits even harder now. Mm. Yeah. I didn't see any of that till after I watched the episode, the other thing that obviously is going on in the news right now. And I mean, pretty much every day for the last a hundred so years, well, not a hundred yet. They're getting to there is Palestine and Israel. And the genocide that's happening on the daily there is also reminiscent of the genocide that we see here in this episode. So it's all these real world tragedies that we can all relate to. And I really like what you were saying and what he said or what they said about how, you know, it's like the before and after these moments in our life. And I remember exactly where I was on 9-11. I I could see the Pentagon burning from my house. So that's how it was for me. It's and like you were at Howard, right? Uh, yeah, I was I was I graduated, but I was living um on Gerard Street, which mm. is a few blocks from the highest point in DC. So I ran on the block, started taking pictures, and all these within 20 minutes, all these news people started pulling up because they could all get a view of the burning of the Pentagon from there. And so that's my memory of 9-11 and just how everything immediately changed after that, how life just became different. So I really related. I mean, obviously, this episode hit on a lot of ways. And then for the comic book reader in me, this episode was like fucking holy shit. It was complete holy shit. Because I, I sat here for five minutes, literally five minutes. I, ha- I had my hand on my head like, what the fuck? Yeah. And. This, there is a shot in this episode, and a lot of this episode comes from Grant Morrison's E for Extinction run, which is his first arc when he, when they, sorry, when Grant comes to New X-Men and starts writing New X-Men, I think this is around 2000, uh, I, I don't misquote me on this, I want to say like 2002, 2003, when it first starts. But when Grant Morrison came to New X-Men, they basically came on and was like, we're just going to do everything different. Because for a long time, it's for most of the things that we know about X-Men, as we've discussed before, it's written by Chris Claremont with some help from Louise Simonson, but mainly Chris Claremont. And Chris basically created everything we know about X-Men. And then when he left in like 92, 93, for like 10 years until Grant comes on, it just kind of stayed in a holding pattern where people just kept doing the same thing over and over again. Little changes, little that, things of that nature. 
Grant comes on, and in his in their second issue, they have a giant mega sentinel, three of them actually, attack Genosha and kill out sixteen million mutants within Jesus. like how many? How many? What was the population of, of there, Genosha? Oh, oh, that's the majority. It was like seven. It was like sixteen point like, something. So, like, so it was like twenty million maybe living there. And no, 16? no, 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 no. Like maybe sixteen point something living there. So ninety eight percent. Ninety eight percent of the population of Genosha was wiped out. And in the comics, as people have been talking about, it barely even happens on panel. There's a panel of the first Sentinel hitting a tower, which was very reminiscent. Obviously, at a World Trade Center, mm-hmm. and Magneto was in that tower at the time. Mm-hmm. And then there's that shot that we see in the cartoon of this giant sentinel overhead of just Genosha. The and Professor X is just like on with Cerebro, and he's just seeing the deaths, you know, of the mutants just being wiped out. And that he's was the end of the issue. Too. Feeling it. So that was, it wasn't even shown the way it was shown in this episode, where it's up close and personal. There are so many name mutants who I, you know, characters that I grew up loving, who a lot of people grew up loving, get knocked off one after the other. So this is a lot more intense and a lot more personal the way they did this storyline, even though it was somewhat condensed from the comments. But as we see, this is going to carry on and on. And then the other brilliance of this episode is that the fact that they combine the idea of what happened in Genosha in the comics with also what's going on with Krakoa right now and like really subtly put elements of Krakoa, such as the council, such as like the fact that mutants are establishing their own culture, their own art, their own identity without the yoke of oppression being upon them. All of that is coming up in this episode. So it was really, I mean, just, I've, it's been hats off and that's something else we got to talk about because like I said, I saw Bo on Twitter this week really like, yo, you know, we did this thing. And mm-hmm. then some people are like, yo, they're giving all the credit to this person and not really remembering that this is a whole team. And so I really want to make sure that we remember that. Like, mm-hmm. there's a whole writer's room. There's a whole animation staff. There's all kind of people that came together to make this season and this episode what it was. And it was some fucking excellent. So, you know, hats off to everyone. Because like I say, the way... They did this E for Extinction stuff, which I highly recommend everyone read Grant Morrison's new X-Men run. It's To me, it's the Chris Claremont run is obviously where it all starts. And then it's Hickman with House of X, Powers of X. And then it's Grant Morrison for like the greatest, you know, or like the most influential and just some of the most exciting, Mm -hmm. I won't say the greatest, some of the most exciting, some of the more revolutionary ideas that came through X-Men. And for them to combine Krakoa which I was really hoping they would do in some form or fashion. And I think we'll still see more of that mm-hmm. later on. We already got three seasons of this show coming. so Facts. But just to get those elements with the council, which I'm sure we'll see again, which could be, you know, combined in the Krakoa later, the whole Moria Metagor, why is this human on the council for everyone who's read House of X? We're all sitting there like, yo, but she ain't a human, you know? So all this stuff. All this subtleness, and then we haven't even gotten into the real meat of this episode, which is just, you know, once yeah, again, yeah. fantastic. I, a great trend that makes, and it makes, it's so smart that we've been seeing from a lot of animation, like the good animation period, like we talk mm-hmm. about this, we talk about Invincible and other shows, is taking those panels where things may happen only on a, a couple of panels where things mm. aren't expounded upon. And because you're in the medium of animation, you're able to literally breathe life and give more dimension. And, and, and in the cases, many cases, give it more story that was actually, than was actually covered from the books. So me seeing that level of animation and chaos, like especially that overhead shot you mentioned of like what I'm calling the Godzilla Sentinel or the Beetle Godzilla Sentinel, whatever the fuck that was, that straight gave me evangelion i was like yes if if anybody watches anime or know or even knows that name when we're talking about extinction level event <laughs> when we're talking about you know some bust the rhymes shout out to him you know some ele types of, like we're talking about unfathomable beyond kaiju type shit going on where there is no fucking escape. And then for you to explain that, at least in the books, we're talking about 98% of the fucking population. Like, th- there's no way. There's no way. And, and that's partly because why I had my hands on my head. I was watching this, this the last 15 minutes of this where I was just like, this ain't fucking happening. Like, they George R. R. Martin and me right now. Oh, my fucking God. Are you serious? You know what I'm saying? 
first thing, they took my nigga Remy. No! Why did they take my nigga? I mean, we, we can't even get to... R- Remy is... They, they took a lot of niggas before they took no, Remy. No, I'm talking about personal, okay? We talking about what personally fucked us up. Everybody dying, that's fucked up. Why they had to take my nigga Remy LaFoto? Why, Lord? Why? Not him. Not you. Not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> not, not like what? this. But, 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 but I will say, listen. Yes, there, there was other major, major implications that happened, right? Um, I, I don't even know where to start. Well, no. I mean, we can start with Remy because that okay. was, you know, the crux of the episode. And as we talk about that, <sighs> you know, anime Evangelion, I don't know how to pronounce it right, Evangel- like yeah. feel of it all. There were so many moments like the initial attack because you had this music playing, you had this nice gala, everything going on. And then it's like, Rah! like the sound design people have the been talking about crazy. Too. In the last 10 minutes, it's just insane. And then, this, like, that, you know, that rush of a sound, like, sounding like a scratching record and all uh-huh. kind of other things going on. But then the silences. Like, the silence when Magneto is about to hit the thing with the train. The sound of, sadly, the shook of mm. Gambit, you know, getting it that, in the middle of his spiel. That rang in my head. And... I wasn't. I was just watching a regular TV. I went like this, like as if to throw off my headphones that I'm not wearing. I was like, ah! I didn't. I didn't want to hear that. I'm. I'm so happy you mentioned the sound design because there were so many effects that, and and the, they didn't turn up the volume as far as I could tell. It's just like I was so intently tuned to what was happening, and everything bothered me. I felt and heard everything. So when that shit happened, I just, I was like. No, like, like it, it, it's it's that level of disbelief, and and also like when the attack first happens that you mentioned, just that, and and it's used a lot in different films too, like that atomic blast that happens where it's mm-hmm. just like the world just it's just light and fire, the world just rushes by, right, and it's fucking clipped for everybody, and to see like how rogue, like, and everybody know, like you know who rogue is and her power and how and how strong she is, to see her just being whipped through the air. The chaos, destruction, debris, niggas, like everything. Like <sighs> And it's like, I mean, there's so many little moments. Like Bo was talking about, someone else tweeted that Gambit dies in this episode thinking that Rogue has chose Magneto over him. Yeah. You know, he storms out of the room before he gets to see her reject madness. Right. And but even in that, right? As they're attacking, as he's riding up on the bike and he knows Rogue is coming up behind him, the smile on his face as he's riding on the bike as Rogue flies by his side. He, loved he that knows woman. she's super strong. He knows she's invulnerable. He knows she's going to come right through that sensor that he left behind for her. And just that slight little smirk on his face. He just like that woman. Yes. That's a soulmate. That's a good and, man, Savannah. And, and that's the thing, like, as, as people know, I grew up hating on Gambit. I grew up loving Rogue. Rogue was my life, everything. I thought she was the greatest character ever. I was fully in love with her. So when they introduced Rogue, I mean, Gambit, I was like, who the fuck is this Negro? And why is he trying to get with my I've woman? I've always loved Gambit. Yeah, love, fuck always. him. Always. Fuck him. Anyway, um, always. but I've come around to Gambit in modern era, and, like, I really love Rogue and Gambit together. And even in a recent X Men issue in House of X, and as a uh, it's this Fall of X, as it's all coming to a close, they jump to the future once again, and Gambit and Mystique are trying to do something to save the world, save the X Men as always. And Gambit sacrifices himself in a manner similar to this episode mm. to save Mystique so that she can get away. And right before he does it, she tells him, "You know, I always treated you like shit because I love Rogue, and that's my daughter." But in the end, you were a good man and you were a good husband to her. And it was, was one a good of the, man. Yeah, and it's one of the moments that just, you know, crushed me. And so then for this to happen again within the space of like two months, I see my nigga yeah. Gambit take bad ones to save the woman he loves. And yes. save and save everyone he can, right? Yeah. Like he, you know, him, him and Magneto teamed up to 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 save what they could and and again, how this show displays the power sets and the things that you didn't think that these people could do with their powers and the and and it makes but it still makes sense. Like it's not a questionable, oh, I never seen them do that before. It's just like, you know what? Why not? 
why couldn't that have happened? For him to be able to do all that power transference onto that fucking Evangelion angel type nigga, like that shit was insane to me. That shit was insane. Like I ain't never seen no shit like that from like he's always been powerful by, personally because I didn't read the books. I ain't never seen no shit like that from him. Oh well, Gambit has definitely started. You know, like I say, in his death in the comics recently, in the future at least, he did something similar to this, and he's definitely you know charged up all kind of different things in the As comics. To, yeah, to do what he has to do. He's throwing, throwing. He was charging up his fucking silk scarf. He was charging up this fucking speed racer. You know, motorcycle. Like he's yep. going crazy on this. And you, you, you mentioned about your heartbreak. My, my other heartbreak was when Rogue was holding his body. Mm. His charred body and just saying, I can't feel you. I I lost it. I done slid out my damn chair. Like, why, Lord, again? Like, you would have thought I was at his funeral crying over his casket, my damn self. I was just like, this isn't happening right now. Yeah, and, that then, was... and then you brought that point. The fact that he died thinking that she already picked Magneto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that really hurt because I that's what I'm sitting as I'm sitting there watching, I was like, oh, she's touching his skin. Yeah. You know? And yep. I'm like, oh, she can finally touch him because Cause he's, he's dead. And yeah, that that definitely broke my heart. It was <sighs> that that whole, like I say, it, it was that slight smirk as he's riding alongside her on the bike that really, really, you know, just ruined me like that. That ruined me, but there was like there's so could much you, in this episode. Yeah, because you ahead. saw you saw that love for him. There was one thing he had mentioned that was also really critical to all of this was when he said, you know, is this the type of woman who like and and I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, this is the type of woman who like it doesn't matter if she rejects you, mm-hmm. just the fact that she she was like fucking with you basically like is enough. And the fact that he wants to see her happy. No matter Mm -hmm. if she chooses someone else is what he said. You know, that's also what he was saying in that sentence. That swamp rat is a good man. No, he is. And, you know, to me, like I say, I grew up like it was some, you know, it's like, you know, being a big brother and somebody come in trying to date your little sister, how I felt when they first introduced Gambit. Because I was like, no, Rogue is the greatest woman alive and no one deserves her, you know? And so this is facts. Rogue Rogue has also been a long time favorite. All right. The other shit that fucked me up, (laughs) as you call him, Zaddy. Zaddy oh. Magneto, why Man. you got to, why you take him too? Um, why you took him too? No, Jesus. There, yeah, there, there, there. I don't have the words, fam. Like Magneto has all, a, uh, j- just like Rogue has always been one of my favorite characters. I mean, just so many moments even up to right now shout out to al ewing writing the resurrection of magneto and the whole x-men red series where like when you talk about power sets magneto at one point powers his own heart with the power of his electric magnetism like when his heart gets torn out of its chest he makes a heart for himself On some Tony Stark shit with his bare fucking hands, nigga. I don't need no cave, nigga. So that's like (laughs) this is the Magneto, and like we saw this Magneto like whipping and and talk about that. Something else Bo talked about was you know him using that a whip in a Tulsa massacre type moment was Mm, a choice. I didn't even make that connection. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that was a choice, you know, and just to see because I, I mean. Way back in the day when Grant Morrison was the first person to introduce that, like we talked about, the idea of Magneto is right. That comes from his run, is kids wearing T-shirts in the comics, you know, young mutants growing up being like, Magneto was right, and they're wearing T-shirts, because it's from that idea. He was was... right. I don't care. I'm I'm Team Magneto. Yeah. Well, debatable, especially if 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 you're a comic fan that, you know, you have to... You have to take all a man's actions. He be doing some fucked up shit. Yeah, like you know. But you so know. That, but he comes from fucked up shit, and that's something that I've I've talked about recently, even in real life. Like you know, when it comes to people as such as Palestine and Israel, people are like criticizing the actions that a Hamas takes. People criticize the actions that oppressed people take. But I brought up someone recently. I said, all right, when Nat Turner killed a bunch of slave owners, you know. That it was a massacre. They mm-hmm. massacred a bunch of people. Was he wrong? No. <laughs> you know, so that's the thing. When an oppressed person takes an action against their oppressor, sure, sometimes, 
is don't be harsh, but what are you doing mm-hmm. to deserve that? Mm-hmm. And and I know how you made the the parallel to Tulsa mass to Tulsa, but I took that the whole whip about like the, the more literal about the fact that sentinels are made to essentially enslave mutants. Yes. Mm-hmm. And now you have the reverse happening where it's just like using and again using that tool of enslavement yep. to 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 try to fight back this this thing, this yeah. entity, which is insane. Um this shit was sad on some of the and again my favorite, Slutty Magneto is my favorite. I got to say that. I've been, I've I love been. Slutty Magneto. When, again, with the tear, when he did that shit before, he did that shit after his, his when he took them niggas up to the fucking fifth dimension in the sky and had that one lone tear for them niggas, and then he did it again. He did it again back in, during his trial. And then he did it again here with the, with the tears when he was just seeing all the, all the destruction and the dream die. Like, he's... Watch the dream die in front of him. And that's some cold shit. Just just in life. To see something you've worked so hard for or pushed for or agreed to in in theory, but then you see it working and you see niggas happy. And then it's to crazy, see that get taken. It's crazy, like I said, how well this dovetails and parallels with Magneto's arc that is happening right now mm. in the X-Men comics with Krakoa falling apart. And him seeing the dream of Krakoa dying. It is damn near the same story. And mm. Bo, the showrunner, is like, we started on this four years ago. Yeah, November 2020. Yeah, so it's like, this well, is just... Before that, right? It's like people, you know, it's that goes back to the idea of there's a lot of parallel ideas. We're all drawing from the same source. And it's also people just recognizing this is where Magneto's character is at this point in time. And if something like this happens to him, how would he react? And yeah, so it's yeah. both, both of these... Great, you know, teams of writers, the Hickman team, mm-hmm. along with the team over at X-Men 97, both coming to the same conclusion. And there was even, like, little moments that I, I just tweeted about this one, because this one, once again, is how these things are parallel in the comics that are fucking killing me. Recently, uh, Magneto died in the comics. They're now going through the resurrection of Magneto, because if you read in House of X, you know, the X-Men were dying left and right, because they conquered death. They had resurrection. Magneto chose to not be resurrected whenever he died. So when he died, that was it for him for about, I think he was dead for about two years in real time. You know, of these comics. He's been dead for the last year and a half at least. So whatever. So when he died, it was a big thing, right? And Professor X was grieving over him. And he was talking to Storm, who'd grown really close to Magneto over the years. And especially over the last few years of Krakoa, they'd grown really close while Professor X and Magneto had grown apart. So Professor X is like calling him, and he at one point he says Magnus, and Storm corrects him and is like Eric, Eric, you know, and he's like, yo, I I, I know, I know he'd gone back to being called Eric, but I didn't know that man, you know, and he's like, you knew him, and that was a great regret. I never got to know Eric, and so in this episode, at one point I think during the council or something, they refer to Magneto as Magnus, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh cool, you know, Magnus. And then when Rogue, Rogue sees yep. what's going on with him in the battle and screams out, Eric. Don't you dare. I fucking lost it. Because like I say, it relates back to this comic where Magneto has been going through this great journey to become Eric, to go back to being the, you know, the man that he should be. And then to see the same thing paralleled in this, where the woman who loves him knows him by the, his birth name, Eric Leshner where that's, you know, who he goes back to in his raw moments. Even when he's speaking to fucking Leech, and he speaks in to German. Leech in German, because that's his native language, and that's what people do in times of stress, is they go back to their native language, their history, their roots, and he says, don't be afraid in German. And then Rogue screaming out, Eric, it's just... It's too this much. It's too much. Too it's too much. much it's too much. I mean, it's too much in a great way, but it's too much. Like y'all, y'all are really trying to get me emo on this, and y'all won. But y'all really trying to get me emo. <laughs> yeah, like you're trying. Y'all did and, it. And that also, I even connected that even like a few like a few moments earlier, a few frames earlier, when Leech was like, Magneto told me that as long as he's here, I, I'll never have to be afraid again. And I'm just like, the baby too, and- like. <laughs> <laughs> Standing next to Leech, the woman who says the Morlocks are mm-hmm. no friends of the X-Men. Rainbow, is, Rainbow Bright. Yeah. Is this character Tommy, right? Tommy was introduced 
in one issue of the X-Men to kick off this thing that was known as the Mutant Massacre, which is another thing that this episode kind of draws into. The Mutant Massacre was all the Morlocks were living underneath the streets of Manhattan, and there was hundreds of them, you know, living mm-hmm. under Manhattan. They're all mm-hmm. mutants living underground. Mm-hmm. And this team of some mutants, some whatever, called the Marauders comes through and just slaughters these niggas. For no over like reason. Over two or three issues. And in doing so, catches a bunch of the X-Men. Colossus gets maimed. Nightcrawler gets ruined. I'm, uh, be- I mean, Angel, that's when Angel gets his wings torn off, which leads to him becoming Archangel. A lot of hella shit happens over these issues. But it all kicks off with this introduction of this character, Tommy. And Tommy is dating this S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And we don't know any of this at the time. At the beginning of the issue, they're on the run. And we don't know why or what. And then the dude she's dating, this no, he's a Hellfire Club agent. He, you know, just a normal human. He gets attacked, killed. Tommy leaves him, runs off, trying to get home to the Morlock Tunnel. At the end of the issue, she gets caught by the Marauders and gets killed. So Tommy is in this comic for maybe four or five, six pages at most. And she's just an unforgettable introduction. And it's one of those characters that she, was, she wasn't used again until Krakoa when she got resurrected in Krakoa. So like, for 20 plus years in com- in real time, she was gone. But just out of those six pages, so many people to this day are huge fans and love Tommy to death because it was one of the harshest introductions to a character, but it just hits you so hard. Mm-hmm. So for her to show up and be in here like, uh, you know, that's been a no friend of Morlocks. It's like, nigga, shit's about to go bad. <laughs> like, it's, it's, but then like, Remy come through the shit with his staff like, bah, like, And you think it, it's all good. Come on, man. No, no. I, at that moment, I was like, oh, look at Remy. Always fly, always on top of things. That shit and look then, good. That, and then five good. minutes later. He looked good with his smooth criminal smooth suit Smooth criminal with the suit on. on. Looking smooth, boy. I mean, and even Bo was talking about that. Like, because everyone was talking about the, the tank top in the earlier episode. They were like, all of that was done to lead up to this. So that you would fall in love more and more with Gambit. If you weren't already in love with Gambit, you were going to be fully I, in love with I Gambit. I don't see how you can't love him. Like... He has, I know, well, you didn't, yeah. but he has, a, he has a, he's, to me, he's always had a true spirit and I always fucked with him. Like, it mm. just seemed genuine from Jump Street and, and perhaps because he's a, he's a man of the bayou and all the other stuff, like all of that culminated in, and then his powers and all that stuff. Yes. But mm-hmm. as a person, all of that culminated as somebody that I felt like I could trust. He was funny. Yes. He's a scoundrel. He was doing he was doing wild shit, but it was like forgivable wild shit. It was for me, it was never like, oh, that's a bridge too far. It was like, eh, that's just Remy. That's just what he'd be doing. And that's so funny because when Gambit was introduced in the comics, this other mystery, in fact, Bishop, when Bishop comes back from the future, Bishop sees Gambit and is like, nigga, you're the b- great betrayer and tries to kill him immediately shit. because he <laughs> says, you're this nigga who eventually will betray the X-Men. And that mystery got resolved. I can't remember how, but for a long time, it like they showed They Gambit. tried to say that was him? It wasn't they my show, nigga. They showed a nigga in the future who was talking with that same French talk that wasn't my nigga. who that wasn't had my betrayed nigga. the X-Men. Nah, so. that, was, that was Bambit. That wasn't, that wasn't, that was Bambit. That was, that was that nigga cousin. That was not him. He was not there. That shit is hilarious because that's straight how he was introduced. Like he was always introduced as this mystery man who may Betray the X Men at some point in the future. Nah, nah, nah. Yep. L- l- this is what happens when you don't you don't have presence of mind on how to read people and stuff like that. You always think the niggas that look crazy that they about to do something. They your best friends, nigga. Well, they showed him doing something. It wasn't just like you know. Nah, that was Bambit. Um. But eventually, Bishop betrayed. You know, all these niggas betrayed. Yeah, everybody. At some point, so everyone yeah. does something. Yo, so. <sighs> oh wait, let, let's talk about that. Talk about yeah. you know. Coming from the future and everybody doing something. In this episode, we also have Cable coming back. And Cable like, what the has fuck? <laughs> now Cable has been on the show before in the original X Men series. Which, if you haven't watched, you know it's on Disney Plus, and I advise at least watching some of he it. He was because, on the original. Him, yeah. him and Bishop. Yeah. Oh, all these people have been on the original, mm-hmm. and a lot of these storylines are going to tie back to them. Like, mm-hmm. who is behind this big attack might tie back to the original series. I'll get into that in a second. But Cable is from the future. Cable is also, this is, I I guess this is a fucking spoiler in some way for a 50-year-old, 40-year-old comic. Cable is the little baby boy who got sent to the future, you know, in uh, two or three episodes ago. 
Nathan That's not a Summers. spoiler. I mean, first of all, anyone watching this and listening to this, y'all should have watched the episode. But yeah, okay. Well, they I even know. said it. His mother said it. Says it in, in this the episode. episode. Yeah, in this episode, they say, you know, oh, you survived, and you know, oh, my baby brown eyes and all that shit. Yeah. So yes, that is Cable. So Cable comes from back from the future and says, "I'm too late." Like you, like we were talking about, this has probably happened multiple times. You know, this whole. He says not again, and not I had again. put a question to you. How many yeah. times has he been to this timeline? We do know he jumps. He jumps yep. times, jump time streams. And how many times did he try to prevent this shit from happening? A lot. Because this is obviously... How many times you fuck around? A lot. A lot, yeah. There, <laughs> there's there's, a, there's a, a lot of big... Like we said at the beginning of this episode, this is obviously a very big episode for a lot of reasons, as what we saw in Genosha. What we see with Scott and Gene and Madeline. What we see with Cable. What we see in the sky before we even see Cable. Did you peep your boy in the stars? I didn't. Well, Galactus? No. No, who was up there? I didn't see anybody. I didn't look up. Watch I was too busy focused down. Who was there? Right when Rogue and Gambit have their big conversation. When, you know, right before. Uh, but basically when Gambit walks out of Rogue's life. For the time being, that pans up into the sky, and yeah. we see the silhouette of the Watcher, Uatu, watching over this whole thing. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice. Yep. That's a good catch. Very, yeah. A lot of people pointed out. It took me a second to see him. I was like, oh, shit, that is him. But yes, Uatu, the Watcher's silhouette, is watching over this whole event, which means a lot of things, which means, one, that this is a very big moment in the multiverse. It's probably a nexus which means event. That this might be a what if type event where, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't what's supposed to happen and Cable is trying mm-hmm. to time correct it to what should happen. Mm-hmm. A lot of different things. But with Cable and with this E for Extinction event that I talked about before and Grant Morrison's comment, in the show, Cable says he's coming. I'm pretty sure he says he, right? He did. Which, I think so. Which might be, you know, they might be trying to throw you off the trail, right? In the comics, what caused this sentinel attack on Genosha was the introduction of another character, Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova is actually going to be in Deadpool and Wolverine this summer. Cassandra Nova in the biggest soap opera shit ever in X Men. Well, I don't know. It's a lot. No, of this shit's shit. already on on as this, you know. This this took it to twelve, fam. Cassandra Nova is Professor X's evil twin, who Professor X strangled in the womb. After she tried to, or actually psychically attacked her after she tried to strangle him in the womb. Well, she started it then. Yeah, she yeah, started it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, Charles is always a little questionable. So she comes back as like the psychic entity and then reforms her physical form and all this stuff. And then causes this master mold, which, you know, builds sentinels to build this giant, insane sized sentinel, which then she sticks three of them on Genosha. And wipes out 60 million mutants. So that's how Cassandra Nova gets introduced as a villain character. She's off killing all 16 million mutants immediately. Why did she do this? Fuck your dream, you know? Just just off some some stupid shit? Just, I don't like your ass. I'm the evil twin. Cassandra Nova is the definition of the evil twin. Whatever you were about, I'm the opposite. You know, so you got a dream, fuck your dream. You know? That's well, in the, well, well, in the show, where did the fuck did these, this Evangelion thing come from? Like, we see the big green pops, but I'm like, are they coming from the future, past, present? Like, what the no, fuck is no, this? No, 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 no. The, the master mold, like we've seen before, is a, is a factory to build sentinels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the big giant one is built from what they were calling in the comments a wild sentinel that would pick up straps and tech from wherever and, and it went. To- so it just kept getting bigger and bigger as it flew towards Genosha eventually getting there and it's this giant size so thing. it was just roaming the fucking earth no it wasn't roaming it took, where was this it? was a it went from a jungle where the factory was in like uh south america and then oh, where trash had this nigga yeah trash it was involved trash involved cassandra nova actually takes the dna out of one of the trash to get the machine to recognize her and then says build these things and six them on the ocean it is a it's like you know it's a Extension level yeah, 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 yeah. She pushes the button, and thirty minutes later, Genosha calls. And so, in the show now, now coming forward with X Men ninety seven. Yes, who launched this attack is the question. Now, the big 
people who everyone's putting up one are Cassandra Nova for the reasons I've just explained. Two, which seems more likely, except that big giant sentinels ain't really they move, is Apocalypse. Because mm-hmm. Apocalypse has been on the show before. Yeah. Cable is always trying to stop this future where Apocalypse rules it. Apocalypse has also been involved with Rogue on the show. He was actually trying to cure her at first. She rejects him, and that led him to creating um, Archangel out of Angel. Right. So this might be a thing where he comes along and raises Gambit as his fourth horseman or as oh, the death Christ, horseman. Oh, Jesus Christ, please no. Yep. So then you got the drama. Please no. God no. Yep. Of Gambit being a horseman of apocalypse and serving death and all that. And then Rogue crying and everything. So that could be a possibility. The other possibility is Strife, who is Cable's clone. I don't... I'm not sure if Strife ever showed up in X Men '97. I'd say, I mean, in the original X Men, I'd say nah because he's corny. You know, he's on my shelf behind clones? me. What the fuck was I mean, him. He he was basically a test tube baby. But like, what the well, fuck was Stri- with all these clones? Strife was actually cloned because you know Cable got infected with the te- with the with virus. The virus. So, so they were like, well, we need a Cable, so let's clone this nigga just in case he dies. You and your mama. Yeah. Mm. So. Okay. The, so and then I. I think that's pretty much it for who could be up behind this. Who pack. could be it and where yeah. did it come from? Okay. And where did his little watch was like body slide one. Yeah. Where the fuck happened and where did he, what the fuck happened and where did he go? Did he back go in back time. to, did he get slingshotted back to Probably where he back was? Probably back to the future. Yeah. Cause it said something about like his temporal shit was running out. So yeah. he got yanked back to the future probably. Which so his mom's to got to again. see him, got to see that he made it. And he's all grown up and old a little bit just to get popped. Yeah, she definitely got popped too. Yep. That happened. So Madeline's dead. Madeline is dead. I they mean, they never this... showed her. By the way, after the, the fucking atomic type blast, you didn't see her anymore. Well, yeah, Bo, I think, confirmed on Twitter that, that Madeline he did? Caught, caught the L. God uh, damn. And then he... most of like the council was killed. Banshee definitely caught the L. Ban- they was in the air getting the fucking getting infinity z- beam. They z- was z- it out of there. It was a boy. rap for them. Poor Banshee, man. They Banshee got eaten out of fucking getting... in reality. And, and then, thinking, like, sir. the shit was had, like, I mean, I know that's DC, but the shit had, like, Omega Beams. Like, what the fuck? Like, no, this was, like, on some different level type shit. You know, them beams, like, you know, that them shits that be hitting where it's just, and like, ain't nothing left of you. It's just it potpourri. Like, no. Had that, uh, what's that? War of the Worlds beams. Yeah. The, the Tom Cruise Pop- War of the Worlds boop, joints. Boop, yeah. Yeah. Boop. Them, yeah. Like, I just, I just did Dusted them niggas. As it was happening, these unnamed mutants was running around getting popped. I was just like, wait. Nigga, it wasn't a name. I, I knew them niggas. That was the worst part. There was me. one black guy or something that he he was he was running for his fucking life. Oh, that oh, no, that rap. thing was unnamed. I don't know. That's who that what I'm was. saying. Like, not everybody. Yeah, just there was some of them where it was just like, Dusty. come on, man. He don't even he not even he didn't get to intro himself, man. Nothing. All right, before we get to, to there were a lot of cameos in this episode. I do want to talk about uh well, Scott there's Summers. Other, there's the other people to talk about. The, 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 yeah. the two major love triangle situations. Yeah, so. Scott, Jean, and Madeline. Listen, I know you keep telling me and other people, y'all don't like the Scott slander. You don't. Yeah, stop it. Guess what? I don't give a fuck. Fuck Scott Summers. I wow. don't like that nigga. Does he make good points? Sometimes. Yes. Does All he have the time. an incredible power set? Absolutely. And it shows much better. It reads much better in X Men 97. Do I give a fuck and do I like him as a person? Absolutely the fuck not. And that will not change. Well, I'm Bat Fultz and I'm here to defend Scott Summers to the day I die. He's one of the greatest <laughs> characters of all time. And I love that this show is finally giving him his due. I really think we're about to see revolutionary Scott where he puts on the red X and the black oh, costume. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got hints of that in this episode when he was telling all Trish Tilby. I also love Trish Tilby for people who read the comics. Trish dates Beast in the comics. And the fake-ass like lo- Barbara Walters? Yeah, she's like a long-time major minor character. So just seeing Trish okay. pop up again was great. Oh, so they uh, was flirting. So that, that was kind of a oh, precursor that, to their relationship. Yeah, that's, oh, they, yeah. They, they, was... they date she... for a long okay. time. That's like one of his Bless major you. loves is, you know, Trish. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and like even in that, just mention her like... Scott was not wrong on how he went in on the reporter. No. Like, he was absolutely right. Fuck her on that shit because it's facts. Because he's just like, why do I have to talk to you to try to humanize myself when without me, your ass would be dead? That was T, and that was a read, and he got, I, I fuck with him on that. 
Yeah. And that was he also basically, you know, like what every oppressed people have always said throughout time is why do we have to prove ourselves to you when we're being oppressed by you and without us, you would have nothing. That's it. That's it. So, you know, I love Scott always. And I mean, he does make choices. That's the thing. Scott on the is mo- other motherfucking hand. Fuck Scott. Okay. Scott is care. a conflicted character. I won't say fuck Scott. I will say that Scott <laughs> is going through it. And anyone a going with a it. heart would understand that Scott is going through it. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I understand he's going through, but I don't I don't like this nigga. The 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 things he does, the 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 unnecessary the, hate. The cut of his jib is something wow. about it that wow. pisses me the fuck off. But you fuck with this but you fuck with the nigga who's over here dirty macking on his woman. Behind you talking back. about Logan? First yep. of all, Logan is innocent. We're not doing that. We, we're Logan talking about rumors. Innocent. Logan is a hundred plus years old over here hitting on. He a... is not hitting on her. He first of all, first, let's not let's not change history. Lo- Logan ain't hit Logan on her. Logan pulled up a gene. I Do need I... you too, Gene. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about when he's simping. He's getting his feeling. We're talking about what we've seen in this episode, which was he pulled up, saw fucking jeans doing some wild shit in the fucking pool and then he said hey yo are you okay hey yo i know you're going through a lot he wasn't trying to as you say dirty mac on her he wasn't trying to be up on her okay he's done it before i understand but we're talking about now yeah okay and he was in his feelings we're talking about now Mm -hmm. that's he didn't do nothing now gene and and you had made a note she was like was that not fucked up how you know gene i said poor i said poor Logan to that because it's true. Logan been fighting for his motherfucking life when it comes to his love and unrequited love for Gene and everything he's been going through. He, he's been fighting for his life for for fucking forever. And I and that was fucked up for him for him for her to kiss him and you know she's in her feelings. She's she's confused as fuck too. And she you know she she feeling vulnerable. You know how it happens when you in vulnerable situations. Sometimes shit go down. But that's too fucked up for him because he's like that's all he ever want. He just want him some Gene. He just wants that love, and that love ain't going to fucking happen. And you saw what happened after she kissed him. What he do? He didn't take it to the next level. He said, hey, yo. Hey, yo, you my, hey, yo, you know, <laughs> you my man. That thing sound like DMX. Hey, yo, you my man's girl. I can't be doing that. You know what I mean? Like, he said, he did all of that, right? He says, you when it rains, the niggas get wet. Them's the rules. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we're not gonna lie on Logan. Listen, let's, let's be fucking clear. Okay? No, 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 no. We 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 don't have to lie on him. He's definitely dirty Matt in the past, and will dirty Mac in the future. Oh my god, that anyway, is what Logan does. So Scott, and also also he's a groomer. Wrong. He's a Scott, groomer. Dead ass wrong. I'm just putting that out there. Logan's a groomer. Scott was dead ass wrong. He is emotionally and psychically cheating, kind of sorta. And I know this is, and I will admit that this is very fucked up and technical. Yeah. And very because debatable. Because the whole Madeline Pryor, you know. Clone. Madeline is his baby mama. That is I undeniable. It, I, get it, I get it. I get it. Gene wasn't Gene, there to have Gene this baby. Was the, but Gene was taken against her will and she was there first and niggas didn't know. So that's why I, I like, know. it's so complicated. It is it complicated. Is. However, comma, once Scott found out, I'm not saying you can't check in on your baby mamas, but he was doing something that Gene said that that's for us. That's for you and me. You was not supposed to be hitting him up on the hotline talking about hey yo baby mama you good like no that she said that psychic link or whatever she called it that's specifically for gene and him that's not again supposed to be for madeline and him in scott's eyes he always had the psychic link with gene he's talking now, about that's one and the same to him okay I get it the is confusion, because but while but, you was while you was you off was while you was off being kidnapped like a sucker sorry you know now you, I was you over victim here. blaming i was now over you here victim blaming? <laughs> You get the blame. See how this I flip, is crazy. Like, like when it's the oppressed people, I'm all on their side. When it's Gene, whatever. No, and I love Gene. So <laughs> I love Gene and I love Madden. In this case, I'm Scott Summers. I feel them both. Because when one was drawn, the other was there. He never knew. So it's he like, never knew. And it's not. And then he fault. had a kid with this woman. No, I don't know. The that link is always going to be there. Everything is true at the same time. Schrodinger's cat. Niggas still cheating, technically. Niggas no. still loving both no. of them because they all want to be the same. Not when Gene kissing another man. Excuse me? In real time. Gene say, that, over no, here, say that again? Gene over here kissing another man. In real time. Nigga, d- let's not act like this is something she been doing forever in a day. Okay? This is she in a been, vulnerable moment. She been flirting with and, Logan forever no, in a day. No, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. And also, this Go is Go back just, and watch some episodes. This is the continuation of the parallels. 
Shut up. This is a continuation of the parallels. <laughs> I watched them episodes again. It's a continuation a of the parallels of, of how of Scott and Jean, of all of the conflicting emotions that they're going through. You know, like, again, her kissing Logan and then Scott doing the mind meld with Madeline. And, you know, all this stuff happening one time. Even when they both express, like, they both recount their story. Like, when he's, when, when Scott's talking to fake-ass Barbara Walters and when Jean is talking to Logan where they were like, you know, when they... And I, I don't, I, I think they were talking about the same story, but it was so disparately different in how they viewed it, right? She was just mm-hmm. like, "Yo, I was the phoenix, and I had the, the the power of the galaxy behind me, and his eyes kept me here." And he was just like, "Yeah, yo, she wasn't fucking feeling me, and she slapped me, but you know, she, she well, I took off my glasses, and I didn't, I didn't, nothing happened. We were safe together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was just when you listen to how he recounts the story to how she recounts the story, it's very different." Yeah, because the experiences are completely different. She was in touch with a cosmic being, and he was dealing with somebody who was in touch with a cosmic the being. Nigga was, the nigga was... It was terrified. The, <laughs> the, the level of Scott simping is too damn high. Oh, wow. oh he was terrified, and she was a cosmic no, being. No, hold on, hold on. Oh, simping. A, oh. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. You're First Scott all, simping. You're Scott no, simping. No I'm, no, I'm standing up for Scott. Second of all, the fact that people are like... and Because uh, I need to say this now, because when... Everyone keeps calling Scott a simp. Scott is a simp for the love of his life. I know that's his wife. That is what people would. You're want. supposed to love and honor and 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 be the. And biggest Scott simp. does I that. It. I don't and like Scott how he doing... does it. I don't like that nigga. I, I get it, but that's just that. That's the problem with a lot of people. They don't like the righteous man. They like the <laughs> the bad boy. You know, when the good <laughs> nigga come along, nobody point. wanna fuck with that nigga. That's not true. Scott that's, is the that's good not true nigga. for me. That is true for a lot of, lot of people. It is. I will and, agree yeah. to that. And that's the problem. So that's what I'm saying. Scott is, yes, he's a boy scout, but he's the be prepared nigga. He's the nigga who's gonna have a million different plans. He's the Batman of the X-Men. He's, I hate that nigga. Man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying hate. Uh, I'm not gonna say hate. He I aggravates know. me. That's not true because I do I, not hate Scott. You know what? I, I take I, yeah. that back. Thank you. Because I take all that back. this I don't is hate him. He aggravates me deeply. We're only on episode five, and I already know that by episode ten you're gonna be singing his praises because I already know where they're going with this man. And that it's that like, I mean, yep. When did the original X Men come out? Like twenty years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I but, hated that nigga since. But, but that's but that's what and that's I, the problem. I, I watched the syndication, but that doesn't matter. You had a, you had a bad representation of this nigga. That and that's the original show, and even the writers. There was an article interview where they were talking about that, like. That two of their goals for this was the redemption of Scott. That was one okay. of their big things because okay. he comes off kind of a sucker in the original series. Okay. Even though I don't think so, but that was the impression. No, he, he is a fucking sucker, and I don't like suckers. Let's be clear. It's not, I call him a simp because it's funny, but I don't like suckers, okay? And I will, like I said, once again, I will take back the word hate. I yeah. do not hate the nigga. He aggravates me deeply. And no, he's amazing. Scott Summers was right. Cyclops was right. That was the shirt that came out after Magneto was right, and it's you know just as appropriate. The other, love tri- right. the, the other love triangle, Magneto, Rogue, Gambit. I mean, we talked about it, you know. Yeah, I mean, shit hurts. Oh wait, wait, hurts, wait, wait! One last but... thing on the on the Strat, um, yeah, 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 on the Strat, uh, Madeline Jean triangle. One, I thought that was fucking brilliantly done. How they did that rapport when Scott walks into the room, and you think this is really psychic happening. Psychic rapport. That's what yeah, the that's psychic what rapport, and he yeah. walks into the room and sits yep. down on the bed, and they're talking, it's and then Gene fight. suddenly appears in the <laughs> air, and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? The fucking whiz shot yeah. pops up and parts and, the curtain and says, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is all in their head, and then it yeah. cuts to the council, and Emma reacting is so classic. Because oh, that what, shit was funny. She, Emma clocked that shit, was like, and, oh, your mind was wandering, huh? Yo! And once again, this is another big shout out to Grant Morrison's run on the comics because in Grant Morrison's run on the comics, Scott starts having a psychic affair with Emma. Listen to the word affair. Oh yeah, no, that's an affair. This was more. Suck this is not an affair, nigga. nigga, I, hate nigga. That nigga. I understand. But keep going, keep at, going, at, keep going. Keep yeah. Going. At the same time, <laughs> Jean is just as responsible for this affair as Scott is. Just as in this show, Jean is just as responsible. Because they don't communicate. That's their biggest issue. Even though they have this psychic connection, they don't really communicate. Because Scott has a lot of shit going on. And Gene has a lot of shit going on, obviously. So they don't really express themselves to each other. While with Emma, Scott can express himself. 
And Jean is off doing her own thing in the comments at this point. She's, you know, like I said, she's rolling around with Wolverine a little too close. So Scott and Emma get into this thing. And then Jean dies. And when she dies, she like sends, you know, as with her psychic energy or the Phoenix Force, sends a message to Scott. to Because in like one version of it, he f stays in love with her. And that ruins the future, basically. Like he never gets over her. So she tells him to, you know, live your life, go on with Emma, and that's how him and Emma become a couple, and that lasted for a good while in the comics. It was actually one of my favorite relationships. So mm -hmm. that was just a really dope I'm shout out right now. there. Yeah, it was that you know her being the one to clock it, of course, because mm -hmm. she's psychic, but also because the exact same thing had already happened to her in the comics, and so that was a little shout yeah. for them. I like that. Um, again, Emma's just hilarious. Um, oh, Emma's the best. And yeah, we, I, we, go ahead. I think Emma probably survives the attack because in the comics again, I think she did. Well, in the comics, this is when Emma discovered her secondary mutation of being able to turn into a diamond form, where her skin turns into diamond, and that's how she survives the attack. That would make sense, especially the blast. You know what I'm saying? Like that's oh, some yeah. shit where you just like, like the first thing you do, your body hardens. Like when something, somebody throws someone something at you that you don't expect, you, you harden your body, right? So for that mm -hmm. to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For that to... Manifest. Not, manifest. Thank you. To manifest. That, that makes sense. Um, yes, we did speak a lot about Magneto and Roe, but I did want to mention, because this also has been going around online too, like, or, and also ask you a question, like, is it truly that a love between, from, from Rogue's perspective, is that truly a love or just a really deep admiration for Magneto based on, like, how their relationship started in the first place? Like... I think it's a bit I, of both. There's a different type of love. Like, I feel like her love with, obviously, her love with Remy is different than her love with Magneto, but I also feel like it's also like a, I'm looking up to this, you know, an admirable type of thing. Like, this nigga showed me the world and he told me that I can touch people. Oh, you know, he, there he, it is a possibility. <laughs> he showed her the world, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I had also asked, because when she was recounting her story, she was talking about the first time I ran away from my daddy. And I was just like, Okay, well, how old were you when this happened? And yeah. she kind of looks the same, but you said she was in her twenties. That yeah, that's what they're saying. And because, also because she, there was a thing going on now that that Magneto was grooming. And I no, don't know that's, if that's that's disturbing. And no, true. When she runs away from her daddy, there's a long time in between that and when she meets Magneto because she lives okay. with Mystique for quite a long time. She said Mystique, her evil ass mama. Yeah, which was hilarious <laughs> because they don't really. I guess they're really doing their best to not name Mystique right now. But they don't want you to make the connection because a lot of people have surmised that Val Cooper is probably Mystique in disguise, judging by Val's actions throughout this series. Oh, so the far. um, the lady with the, the ugly ass dress today. Okay. Yeah, and that actually happened in the comics too. Uh, Mystique replaced Val for a while and but... allowed the government to like form a team of mutants. Like she poses Val and got um her Brotherhood of Evil Mutants exonerated. And working for the government is freedom force. But when Mystique, for example, when she transforms into different people, does that also mask her mutant DNA? And the only reason why I'm asking that is when all the niggas was running for their life away from the Sentinels. I, I mean, granted, you can, you can, all the mutants was there. But no, it, well, I'm <laughs> gonna say it's plausible yeah. that it, it, that was happened. But did the Sentinel actually notice her? No. It wouldn't have to because at that point, one mystique is not an omega. But notice her mutant. as a mutant. I mean, like the Sentinel knows everybody that's a mutant, and if and, and I'm just saying that I'm saying this in the terms of the, the the sense that this could be mystique. Wouldn't the Sentinel have said that's a mutant? Looking at no, because he was blasting everyone. Remember at that point, <laughs> it was not making a distinction. mutant detected, and I'm just like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> at that point it was like nigga, was mutant standing detected in, cause I feel like it was look, uh, yes everyone was getting there was a bitch. bunch of niggas right next to her getting, right, I, was just getting I don't know I was just and again plausible deniability it's like well could no, he no. could not be he, okay. yeah, no, that's the point of that one and that one yeah. the sentinel could have said mutant detected and he could have been talking about her or 50 other niggas standing next to her so. true true <laughs> it's just that when the zoom in came to her crying I was like oh shit so I don't but know. the big point in the episode was when Magneto said I chose Rogue, Val's look is like, fuck. And that wouldn't be a look that Val would normally have. And oh, also, that is true. That, also, I like that. Val is not the type to run around saving mutants when a giant sentinel is attacking. Nah. She was Val's the type to dip. So it's like, so 
that it seems plausible and and the fact that they didn't name Mystique in this episode that they went with evil ass mama evil ass is, mama yeah was also like okay Mystique is somewhere and they don't want to name her to remind folks that yeah. she's you know right here so and, yeah no there was yeah. time yeah back to the point there was time between Magneto is not a groomer okay any more so than Wolverine is just putting that out there Wolverine. <sighs> In this episode says my mug has not changed in over a hundred years. years. Yes, but Ben, you know it's also different. It's not, it's not. This nigga it's got a hundred years of game, fam. Okay, but he's messing with <laughs> adults. He's not messing with a 17-year-old. You know Look, what I'm saying? So if I had a hundred years of game, you a 17-year-old to me. <laughs> I'll just say. Okay, Vampire in Brooklyn. Like, we're not I know, talking like, about that. I know, see, we, see I, you I know, called but it's relative. Vampire you, in Brooklyn. But you know that's what right. I'm saying. That's okay. relative. Yes, someone who's 100 years old, any other person's going to be young them, but you know yeah. that's not the same. You know that's not the same I, I as just know a 60 year old talking to a 17 year old or so on and so forth. I just and know no if a one, sexy 100 year old, you know. And also, what 200 year old or 300 year old, whatever how old this fucking nigga is, what 200 year old you know? Like, that's what I'm saying. Get the fuck out of here. No, that's what I'm saying. He, none of them. And that, and here's one who's alive, who still looks good. So, boom, boom, boom. You a nigga, man. I don't. This can't. I'm just saying that Wolverine's no. a groomer. Um, and also, just, just one more thing to touch upon again when it comes to that love triangle. Just the way that Magneto protected them. Like, he's, again, unbelievable said, power. We will not wonder if we could have done more unbelievable power like the the, the the death that's coming raining down upon and he's still being able he's holding it down for the entire unit that's there and then still got the wherewithal and the strength to wrap a rogue and gambit in that bubble of metal like no nope, y'all gonna make it leech i'm sorry nigga you got to go but but we hold on <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think i was gonna do that <laughs> Wait, no, because I just try to say that neither of them niggas is dead. No, no, that's no, I'm just playing. But I know, I'm just, but I'm, I'm Jesus just saying. But I mean, I'm also just, I'm just. And that nigga said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, nigga, because I'm dying too. <laughs> <laughs> we die together. You ain't going to have no time to be afraid. And, and let's be clear, Leisha ain't even feel that. That shit, that, <laughs> that's, that's potpourri city, like immediately. Right. He ain't even feel that. He let's, let's be clear. What my judgment of what happened in those final moments is Leech uses his powers on Magneto, thus removing do the threat of being an Omega mutant. Leech cancels out his powers, so up. Sentinel can't see Omega mutant there anymore and does not finish the job. Plausible deniability accepted because the Sentinel first says Omega threat detected, and then when it was all done, he didn't say Omega threat uh, destroyed or whatever the fuck. Terminated. He says, mutant terminated. And there was no distinction. That's why I said plausible deniability. I, I might accept that. No, That'd be least, nice. But yeah, as far as I know, Zaddy no, is it. Nobody, no, no, you know, and we didn't see them get turned to potpourri. So Leech and Magneto are still alive. The rest of them niggas. Why, how would Leech still be alive, though? That's what I don't understand. Because Magneto's shielding him. Up at, well, ugh. no, you just said, say Leech took that power just so he mm. wouldn't be targeted no more. That means Leech is the target now. That means all them other Morlock niggas is a rat. No, which no means. but see, if he's targeting Magneto and suddenly does not know, and suddenly it's like, okay, Magneto's dead, he, not, he just stopped shooting. But it didn't, did they stop shooting or did it just blow up? I saw an explosion, Ben Hameen. It wasn't just a, oh, the beam yeah, turned off. Yeah, but Magneto off. still got his shield. Uh, well, maybe he doesn't. I saw um, an explosion. That's what I'm saying. Well, it wasn't Magneto like the wrapped beam him, Maybe Magneto wrapped him in their own metal cocoon and then, you know. You want look, the nigga to be alive so bad. Magneto's alive. I'm not worried about that. I, I'm, you, I'm just you, trying you, to figure ass. out for the riders. I already know he's alive. The rest of these niggas is cooked. Like, Gambit's <laughs> cooked. Nightcrawler is either cooked or, you know, semi-cooked. <laughs> No, Banshee Nightcrawler, cooked. Right. Nightcrawler was in the garden. First of all, like when they when when Gambit checked his post, he said he alive. Yeah. That's another reason why I love Gambit. I love how he speaks. I love his voice. <laughs> you like I my th- voice? I think I reading the comments, one. I hated it because it, it was always like it was that it's that fake French. Talk. Yeah. Not like and lit but, this and lit no, he that. Said, he said yeah. he alive. Um. So no, Kurt's all right. You know, he's just mm-hmm. he's just fucked up. But he's all right. Yep. Um. You a did. lot of niggas got cooked. There was a lot of people who showed up in this episode who were probably cooked. Oh, uh, your man Glob, 
who was that weird pink mutant where you could see his skeleton. He was very disturbing. Yeah, could. He's also a Grant Morrison creation. Uh, Pixie was the character that uh, not Zendaya, who played her. No, Zoe the, Kravitz played Zoe her Kravitz in the Fox played her movies. In the, film. In the Fox was, X-Men movies. Yeah, that was Pixie. She got mm-hmm. cooked. Nature Girl, another... I'm not sure when Nature Girl showed up in the comments. I love her, though. She's more That's recent. the one with the um the little, tree branches for ears. Yeah, I yeah. mean, horns. Cooked. Little. Yeah. <laughs> cooked. Um, little Fish fish Boy, I think is his name. I'm pretty sure he got cooked along with the rest of the... Like, a lot of he was got laid cooked. out with the council. He was like... Remember when they oh, showed okay. the council? Oh, he okay. was one of the niggas that was laid out. Now, I don't Damn. know that... Automatically meant death, but like this boy ain't got enough power to. And then when they show, what's her name? Callisto, the one that Callisto was laid, and her eye, when her eye, shut, the pupil, it didn't cooked. shut. The pupil like got small, and I'm, I'm like, dead. yo, that's the life coming out her eye, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the. I'm dead. Um, <laughs> Callisto, we saw there was so Sebastian many cameos. Shaw? Oh yeah, Sebastian Shaw, part of the council. Did that nigga also, make it? Because I didn't see him no more. Hi, his power set could make him survive. Sebastian Shaw can absorb uh, physical energy and kinetic energy and turn it into power. So, oh, they're not gonna do that shit to Darwin though, huh? They're not gonna Darwin him, huh? No, probably not. But Sebastian Shaw is one of the characters who could get cooked and wouldn't, but you know, mean yeah. much. But um, we saw a lot of different cameos in this episode. There's a character, Cipher, not the Cipher that I know and love. There's another Cipher. The black woman with the dreads who phased through this red character who is Exodus. Exodus is a like super powerful mutant. So I'm not sure what they're gonna do with them, you know, as far as if they survived this whole attack or not. But Exodus was there. Shit, we see Dazzler at one point. Dazzler, we, you see her a couple times. And I thought yeah, she, see, she got popped. Yeah, and she had well, I mean she was in the gala, so she ain't making it out of that. Yeah, her I thought, power I set she of got not popped. making it through that. Um, uh, we see Moira. Boom Boom. Yeah, we see Mora. We see Boom Boom, uh, who is another one of the New Mutants X Force. She actually cozies up to Rogue when they're at that market thing, watching the dude perform. Boom Boom bounces into Rogue and like gives her a little, you know, bump. Mm-hmm. Um, Mora, of course, which we discussed earlier, and the way the camera holds on Mora when they say that you know why is this human on the council, which could be a hint at something coming. Who knows if they're going to mm-hmm. actually tackle the Krakoa and the 10 lives of Mora X. We'll see. If you haven't mm-hmm. read House of X, Powers of X, you've got to read that to know what I'm talking about. It's Hush. M- Mora's on some uh, Mr. Immortal type shit, right? Mora mm-hmm. is on a different thing than Mr. Immortal. Mora is on, basically, Mora, every t- her mutant power is basically to reset the universe in a way when she dies. Mm-hmm. So when she dies, she lives her life again with the full memory of everything that happened to her before. So Right, right. Okay, now and, I remember. And yep. so the universe basically goes along with Mora. So it's like, basically right now in the X-Men continuity, in normal X-Men time, whatever, we're living in the 10th life of Mora. Like right, she's done right. this 10 different times. Yep. And the current canon that we all know, mm-hmm. you know, from the beginning of X-Men mm-hmm. is all in her 10th life. Right. And, and that's that was, what's happening right now in Krakoa. That, that was right about to say the Krakoa. Yep, the Krakoa. So series. right yep, now yep. in X-Men 97, if we were going by that, we were we would be in one of Moira's lives right now where everyone thinks she's a human, but she herself would know that she's a mutant, she's a mutant. and is living this life manipulating things because that's what Moira does in House of X, Pies of X, and manipulate a lot of things and lives these lives in different ways, trying to find either a cure for mutants or to help mutants, various different things. It's, you know, debatable whose side she's really on. So that was a really, really dope shout out. And I know that was purely intentional because, you know, this was started written like, you know, four years ago, whatever. They've been refining writing this up until recently. And the Moria stuff is now like four or five years ago. So yeah. 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 Um, Charles Xavier haters will be happy to hear that uh, he has been the cause of death for more mutants as well. His statue fucking collapsed on a bunch of niggas. That was fucked up. <laughs> that that really. I was, was like, God damn, why Charles' statue got to fall on nigga? And then Magneto crushed. You know, it was an accident, but him crashing through it, and then the whole shit falling out. I was just like, symbolism. <laughs> why? Why does this have to happen? And there was a lot of really quick stuff in this episode, like in that shot when Magneto, you know, is about to, you know, when he says they will be avenged, and you see a shot of mm-hmm. a body on the ground with the sheet over it, which I presume is his daughter because his daughter gets killed. And that's one of the biggest things in Magneto's mm-hmm. life is that 
his human daughter dies and there's mm -hmm. never anything he could do to save her. Mm -hmm. It's when his powers first manifest, really, is when his daughter dies, yeah. at least in the comics. In the you, com see you see the, the Holocaust. Holocaust. The, with the barbed wire. When he's saying barbed that, that, wire. that shit took me out. And then there's another quick burst of shots when Jean or when Madeline gets the attack at the gala. And there's a bunch of rats. There's a bunch of rats. She's holding. She's there's one with is her holding the baby, which we kind of yep. saw before. But she's mm -hmm. wearing the outfit, the the yep. costume. There's a bunch of there's something else, and then a bunch of rats. Yeah, and rats mean decay and and chewing away, eating thing. away at things. A and, rat inside your system, you know, is there yeah. a traitor in the system? All yeah. these type of things. Sinister, of course, being yeah. a rat who's always you know in the X Men system. You know, he's just a rat in their matrix, basically. So. Yeah. That could refer to a lot of things. Oh, and that was the other person who could be behind this attack is Mr. Sinister, but that's highly unlikely as well. Like he already did what he had to do to, to fuck shit up. So I think oh, he good. He had Yeah, it. he'll he'll be back, but the Sentinels aren't his thing. Nah. Like And Sinister is more on like Maury show type shit. Like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. gonna make this really dramatic and fucked up for you because yes. I you know, I, I like problems always type shit. Like, you know, not not on like to your point, not on some uh sentinel type shit. I, I don't think that's his bag. It it could be apocalypse with his whole, you know, the strong survive, and this is how I call the week, which you know works for him. And I, I'm leaning towards him because I just think I don't know. Cassandra Nova seems like it'd be a lot for this, even more than doing Kakoa right now. But who knows? Just yeah. like I said, they've been doing all kind of shit that I just have not been expecting. So the only sunshine for me in this episode was like seeing Rogue and Gambit fight together, and just as you said that that whole. That being that feeling of belonging with each other and all that other stuff. And then Emma, of course. Like when she basically said Dr. Cooper dress is ugly, I was fucking dying. Um, cause she said, Dr. Cooper, she said, What's wrong? And Emma was like, Is it your dress? Yeah. <laughs> Look, this, this bitch just been going in on the niggas. Like, Emma is the best. Like she's Emma funny. Frost is one of my favorite characters. She's, you know, her redemption in Grant Morrison's arc. And then the stuff she does with Generation X is just, she's one of my favorites, man. Emma's always been a favorite. Like, she's a really tragic character because yeah. a lot of kids die around her, sadly. And she has to live with that weight. Her psychic powers make her live with that weight even more. The whole, I mean, when Genosha gets attacked, like, she's in the middle of teaching some students in class. And she says some snarky shit to this kid. And then, boom, they're all dead. Yeah. And so it's just like, and that's yeah. her, that's a, that's a, um, that's an MO, that's a personality to be snarky and funny. Yeah. And but and then that. it's like, you know, you say some snarky shit and then everyone dies around you instantly and you're like, oh, yikes. Right. Um, yeah. you mentioned just again, just, just finishing up with like, when we talk about sound and stuff, sound design was incredible. And also the music choices as well. During the gala, they were playing Ace of Bass's song called Happy Nation, which, which went crazy with every scene. Like there's even a point in the song where they're singing in Latin. And then, like that, that part starts happening when all hell breaks loose. That shit, that shit was too much. And I didn't. The, some of the other music was kind of a bit weird to me, like when that uh, aforementioned scene in the street performance, and it felt a little tribal, a little African. Kinda. I thought they were trying to make it sound like they was like Brazilian, Wakanda, Afro, Afro music. yeah. And it was like I get it, you know, mutants being the indigenous population, et cetera, et cetera. Would have some, you know, and then all these mutants I, are coming from different cultures. But, but I thought because the two people, I mean, you, I think you said the name of the mutants, the two people dancing, they was darker skin. I thought yes. like that was supposed to be their music from they, you know, where True they indeed. from. That's what I was saying. Like, you know, because all these mutants come from their different cultures, they're representing themselves. Plus, they're bringing this whole new mutant culture together. So I thought that was, you know, it was, it was a choice. I guess yeah. it'd be better than them doing like, you know, Irish River dancing music. That shit would be whack. Okay. So, um, yeah. Just the fact about that whole Happy Nation song, they said the song is a response to everybody talking about how bad everything is. I think the best thing is to see the positive. And then boom, boom fucking else. Evangelion shows up. Big L. God. Big L, rest in peace, shows up, boy. <sighs> Anything else you got, man, I mean, for this episode? Like, this shit is Well, insane. like I said, that was another thing. Like you said, hell breaking out at the gala, the whole, you know, your dress is whack. All that was... Big shout out to the Hellfire Gala, a thing that's been happening mm -hmm. in the X-Men comics over the last few years. Every year, they've been having these big galas with so all the beautiful. characters showing up when in all the ill costumes. Incredible costume design. Yeah, so that was really dope. I just, um, once again, I want to shout out Nightcrawler, man. Seeing my man, Kurt no. Wagner. Yo, thank you for saying... 
the way they showed his 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 bamf, you know yes. <laughs> the power i like that like again the way that this show has elevated how they display the power sets and how because we're in the future obviously like it's looks classic but with a twist right is classic look with you know some updates and then it looks extra good like yes. to me it's, they made him do it so many times they made him banff a lot like that looked extra good with him like popping in and out of different places and then like it's all the little moments he pops in and shakes magneto's hand the two german characters mm -hmm. you know have that quick little handshake and then off to whatever else because kurt is just such a different character and then the reference to their adventures from the earlier x-men episodes and things of that nature, the reference to Kurt being a priest and that, you know, part of his whole thing mm -hmm. is about religion. And also he was talking about that with bringing the new religion to Krakoa and all that, which is, I mean, to Genosha, because that was the role he did in Krakoa in the comics was figuring out what mutants religion would be. That's right. That's right. I mean, and, and yeah, I was right earlier. There is 10 episodes in this season. Um, we are officially at the halfway point and the next episode is Life Death Part 2. So we get to see what happens with with the um, storm and the whole, I called him a Baltimore Raven demon, like uh, whatever oh, the that adversary. nigga said. The adversary, thank you, <laughs> that nigga. Um, and then of course, the, this whole toxic gas relationship with, with Forge and everything that goes along with that. Oh man, and yeah, that was a lot. Like, yeah, the adversary comes from uh, a part, a run on the comments called Fall of the Mutants, where Storm and Forge go up against the adversary and, uh, at the end of that, a lot of the X-Men take a really bad one. And there's three episodes at the end of this uh, first season that are part one, two, and three mm -hmm. that they say, you know, that this part five is now leading up to. And the name of those episodes evokes the E for Extinction. E for Extinction, yep. So a lot of us, me and myself included, thought, oh, okay, Genosha's going to get nuked in the last three episodes. Now seeing that Genosha it's already get nuked now. in this episode... I have no clue what they're going to do with those last three other than some major shit. I obviously assume I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't know, you know, what they could be referring to now. Who knows? Who like, knows? Like we said, Life Death Part 2 will be about Storm. Season, season, uh, episode seven, Bright Eyes, is Cyclops focuses oh. the X-Men on finding Bolivar Trask. However, when the team locates the Sentinel Inventor, they realize they've all been played by a mastermind. So whoever is going to be behind them, who's ever actually behind all of this is going to be revealed. Mora? I don't know. I don't know. And then the last three episodes, as to your point, Tolerance is Extinction, part one, two, and three. It's just really, it's just really basic descriptions. It says X-Men must, must unite to face a threat. X-Men work together to settle the score. Then the last episode says X-Men's dream is put to the test as mutant-human relations reach a tipping point. Mm. And that tolerance is extinction. It was that's what they referred to earlier in this series. Was that's what I think Cyclops says that, or someone says that to Cyclops, like you know, if we tolerate y'all, we will be extinct. Yeah, you know, because mutants will eventually replace humans. So if Magneto's is alive at the end of all of this, then he's going. Is I mean, what's ha he's going to go ham? He's going to go ham. Like yeah. Yeah. Both tears done drop now. It's, and it's once a again, this is paralleling, like in the resurrection of Magneto in the latest issue, which actually dropped yesterday. Magneto, he's resurrected. He's back. This organization, Orcus, which is like the Friends of Humanity, plus the government, plus this, plus that, all combined, have just wrecked Krakoa and wrecked, you know, mutant kind in the time that he's been dead. Mm -hmm. So when he comes back to life, he's like, yo, who am I going to be? Am I going to be. The peaceful Magneto who was on Krakoa trying to make it all work like Charles wanted? Am I going to be my old school Magneto who's just wrecking shit? Right or am shit. I going to be the vengeful, you know, mutant liberator Magneto who's doing ham? And in the end, he pretty much chooses it's time to wreck shit. And that feels like where they're going with this too, so. <sighs> Episode yeah. fucking five, man. <laughs> Hats off. Hats off to y'all. Um, that's everything, Ben. All right. We got to make sure that we tell people, appreciate you for listening and watching us. Please make sure you keep it locked to our YouTube, youtube.com slash for all nerds TV, where you can watch us in all our glory and all the other clips and other shows that we have. Please make sure you are subscribed to us on 
all platforms. We are everywhere in the world you can possibly think of. For All Nerds is the podcast. Every platform. Spotify, all that shit. Um, make sure, but my brother, um, I think it might be too late now, right? Like, I think it was Sunday was a deadline to get that signed copy from anyone comics. But my, may not, no, you can still get one. Still, so my yeah. brother, my brother, DJ Ben Amin here, he, uh, along with Mellow Brown, co-wrote a, an incredible graphic novel called Jimmy Hendrix's Purple Haze. That is his first graphic novel along with Titan Comics, the publisher Titan Comics. This shit is lit, like beyond belief. It's real. It exists. It's coming. It's dropping in the summertime. You still. He has some special signed copies that you can get from anyone comics in Brooklyn. It's a is an independent comic shop, but you can buy it online. That's actually how I got mine. You can buy it online, and you can either get it mailed to you, or you can actually do it for pickup in a place. But go to. You could literally type in Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze. You will find it. Um, we do encourage you to try first with your local retailers, with your local bookstores, hit them up. And then obviously, if you want to straight from the source, go to Anyone Comments in Brooklyn, go to anyonecomments.com. I think that's a site. You just Google that. You can also go to bigdjenergy.com to see what DJ Ben Hameen, Mr. Big DJ Energy himself is going through, what he happening, what's cooking, what's cracking, all that, all the euphemisms you want to say. Um, and also listen to his music because he has some ridiculous... Ridiculous, ridiculous mixes, including a mix with Beyonce. Feel, you know, the feels like summer mix. Like the man's is going crazy with with, with all of his creativity. Man's crazy. Um, make sure you're following me as well, Tatiana King, on all the socials. I am going back into my tech bag, working on a bunch of videos. We're going to be talking about all the consumer tech devices and things like EV cars and all this other stuff. Coming from my perspective, of course, and my personality, so you know it's going to be funny and jokes everywhere. Um, so we appreciate that. And make sure you're following us on social in general, right? DJ Ben Hameen, Tatiana King, and For All Nerds on every platform. What else is happening? Castle Black is coming back. We already came back, technically. We covered the green and black trailer a few weeks ago. We covered the green and black trailers for House of Dragon. I know everyone's super excited to see that the show is back. And, of course, we're going to be covering House of Dragon when it returns in full. So make sure you are locked to For All Nerds to get that. Um, shout out to Portia. Shout out to our baby, our engineer, Luna, who yes, yes. is Big Daddy now. Woo! He just celebrated him and his wife just celebrated the birth of their precious, beautiful daughter. Congratulations to the both of you. You know we love you. You know we appreciate you. And we can't wait to see great things. Um, our little Khaleesi, if you will, right? Um, shout out to Joel, Joel, the intern. We love you. We appreciate you. Salute you. You can also see Joel in the in the episode review of X Men ninety seven episode four. He was on there along with Chase and Lux. Thank you, Chase and Lux, again for joining me on that. Um, and as usual, please support us. We do everything we do. We we do independently. This is independently funded. Also, the four owner shop is dropping. Coming soon. Opening. Very, 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 very soon, go to forallnerds.com. You'll be able to get back into the thing, back into the mix with the new t-shirts, okay? We're also working on some new designs as well. Forallnerds.com to get your merch. We are so excited that it is back. And you can also go to Patreon, patreon.com slash forallnerds. Every tier is a great tier. We also owe an episode for the Patreon folk. So we're going to get to you. Um, But thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. All, All the, all the... All the support, the financial support people provide for us goes right back into the podcast. That's how we pay everybody who helps us, who deals with us. We, we, whenever time we got to go to comics, uh, comic cons or whatever, this is how we do things. So we appreciate and love all of you. Word up. Hey, y'all. Thank you for watching this For All Nerds video. Whatever video it was that you just watched, make sure you hit these buttons below. Press all those buttons that like that subscribe, whatever you see right below these fingertips right here, just hit them, hit them, hit them.